How's it going, everybody? I'm Patrick Static, and welcome to a brand new game that's coming out later this month that I'm very excited to show you guys a sneak peek of called Dark Alliance. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Let me know how your guys' day is going down in the comments. Uh, so a couple of things. One big, big thank you to Wizards of the Coast for allowing me to record this with them, uh, with, with some of the devs. It was really, really fun experience. I got to play with another YouTuber named John, I believe his name was. Uh, but for those of you guys that are Dungeons and Dragons nerds, this game is up your alley. Uh, I'm going to have the devs here explain, kind of in the recording, everything that's going to be going on. But they're going to be walking us through everything that Dark Alliance is. Now, I do want to say it comes out June 22nd. I'll probably have some more videos on it when the day gets closer. But what I can tell you is it's a four-player co-op kind of dungeon looter hack and slash. It's really, really fun. You have tons of gear you can chase, tons of skill trees that we'll go over in the video, and just a ton, a ton of fun and ton, a ton of lore when it comes to the Dungeons and Dragons world. So if you guys are interested, definitely check out the link down in the description. Big, big, big thank you again to Wizards of the Coast for allowing me to play. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please do let me know what you guys think down Welcome, in the comments. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the Dark Alliance hands-on demo. Uh, today we're going to play through a, a new never before scene with a with a new uh, boss that, that uh, called the chef. Um, we're going to take a look at well, I mean, you've been taking a look at base camp and some of the character moves already, um, and we're also going to talk about uh, the post launch DLC, uh, what what to expect, what's coming out here this year. That that's everything that I have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, JFC, who we've been talking about or who we've been talking to already, um, who's actually the lead mission designer uh, on the game. So, JFC? Yeah, uh, I have kind of a couple of things to go through first, and then we can walk around the, the base camp and we can go to the mission. Um, so, yeah, just an overview of the game. Uh, it's a Dungeons & Dragons action brawler uh, with co-op uh, co experience. Um, it's worth mentioning that it's also 100% doable uh, single player. Uh, they're both really solid experiences. Um, I guess the, the biggest difference is if you're playing with friends, uh, because we can raise one another and we have all those abilities that work off one another like it can become a bit easier on the same uh, difficulty levels i'll talk more about difficulty later but they're both really cool experiences just slightly different um it takes place in icewind dale uh which is like a really well-known region of like uh the forgotten realms um and the game is taking place after the events of a book in the D&D universe uh, written by Ari Salvatore called uh, The Crystal Shard, where it's basically like a sentient shard that took over the mind of a wizard, made him all powerful, all hell breaks loose. And these heroes, the companions of the halls, some of them are the ones that we're playing right now. Uh, um, they actually stopped it. And our game takes place afterwards. The, lo the shard was lost again. And the title Dark Alliance kind of comes from the fact that the monsters in Icewind Dale, they actually kind of temporarily ally to kind of find the shard for themselves and we're going to try to stop uh, as we go through the game uh, when it uh, releases it's going to be 39.99 um, we're going to have 21 levels uh, at launch so 21 specific maps uh, to go through um, it's seven missions broken down into three acts uh, the missions structure in general is usually you have like uh, the, the the three acts will end where the third one is where you face like kind of the main boss of that 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 section uh, I'm going to talk real quick about the, the post-launch content. So we have a plan to launch three, uh, we have three releases for 2021. Uh, we have DLC 1, which is going to be like a free DLC that's coming this summer. Um, it's a new mission, entirely new mission, so three new maps, um, where the spirit of the forest has been corrupted by rates, and you need to go in there and kind of like uncorrupt them save them uh after that this fall we have a second free dlc which is going to be again another mission uh three three maps this one is um a troll infestations where troll i've taken over a part of uh, um Kelvin's Gern, which is also a big location in this setting. And finally, like DLC 3 is a paid expansion later this year, uh, 1999. This one has an entirely new storyline spanning multiple missions. Uh, we're going to introduce new enemies and uh, perhaps at least the one I'm more the most excited about is a new playable character, which is going to be like a magic uh, user class. So I can give the detail of exactly what the class will be, but it's really full on magic user. Uh, another important point for us is uh, it was super important for, for us as uh, the development team and we definitely heard how important it is uh, for the community to have couch co-op in the game. 
So right now, um, our priority is obviously to finish the game so that it's uh, amazing at launch. But our immediate priority afterwards is going to be to bring Couch Co-op uh, Split Screen to um, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and PC. Uh, we're currently aiming to do that around the DLC 1 release. Uh, uh, um, we'll see how that goes, but the one thing that's for sure is that's the main priority. The three main things uh, that you do here, this is where you're going to start and end every mission. This is really like your base of operation. There's the merchant here. Um, and this is where like you're going to sell the equipment that you no longer use or that you're not interested in. Uh, you can buy new potions, uh, upgrades the potions you already have. In this build, like I said, we unlocked all the moves uh, for you, but normally you'd have a default set, which is quite extensive, but you can then buy new moves. It kind of gives you the time to learn everything. Potions is the same. You start the game, you only have a health potion. After that, you can unlock new uh, usables and then you can actually upgrade them. You can upgrade the equipment as well. In the middle here, we have our loot chest. Uh, this is where everything we pick up as we play missions will be, because we really want. Well, I'll talk a bit more about that um, once we finish the mission. But like we we went with the approach that it's a co-op game, and the idea is you stick uh, with your party until the end. So, you, whatever you pick up as you play will tell you like the the rarity and the type. So you'll say, oh, this is like a, an un uncommon armor piece but you don't know exactly what it is it's when the mission is over and you come back to camp then you go to your loot chest and it reveals what you actually picked up and then you can equip it um then we have the map selection uh, right now i'm the party leader so i'll be the one able to start the mission but you can all uh interact with it and see uh, what's on it uh, it should work um so yeah it's a good spot to talk about the mission structure for the game so the way we did this is uh there's, it's an open-ended structure. There's actually one mission in the beginning that you need to go through before everything opens up. This one is really to set the story of the game, uh, kind of introduces uh, uh, the mechanics, the way it works. It's not like a tutorial mission in the sense that if you play it afterwards, it's still a full-on mission that's enjoyable. Like, it's not just a tutorial mission. Once that's done, then you open it up and you can really address the missions in the order that you prefer. Uh, there's a tactical aspect to it. Like, uh, every mission is... Um, focuses on one enemy type doesn't mean that it's the only me there uh, only enemy there sorry like you can find them all around but it kind of showcases that enemy a bit more and sometimes like specific gear sets for your for your character are going to be more present in, in the drops of a mission or you could be thinking something like okay you know what i want to face goblins a bit more well go do the goblin mission and you know that the set you pick up in that one is more more often the frost set which you can use to go fight the giants that kind of that kind of thing so this is the third act, um, it's a good spot to talk about the fact that the game is really like combat is our main uh, uh, focus, but we do have like traps and, and exploration and we'll, we'll focus more on the critical path uh, today, but like there are those those uh, exploration setups and different hazard types, some are magical, some are more like, like spikes like these uh, uh, all over the missions. Oh, I'm gonna get stuck. I, 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 I have a healing circle, so if you get hurt too much, you could probably. Oh, that was a bad decision. I just made one. I'm gonna die. Oh no! Yeah, see? That's, don't, don't try, like, just leave me there. I think it's safer. <laughs> Especially because, like, you gotta get stuck into me. Can you get me back? That's, that's a lot of. Honestly, I'm, uh. That's some. Pretty cool companionship right there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, worst case, like, one way to start a mission. Yeah, that's it. The worst thing too is like this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna respawn uh, at the next. Uh, oh crap! I'm. Just, yeah, end up doing just, my no, when, you, when you die in the yeah, the thing to keep in mind and that's that's the thing is like, if you were in the oh heck, oh no, I'm I'm gonna come and help you guys. Wait up. Um, yeah, the thing is like because it's Act Three, it starts a bit. On the rough side, <laughs> because technically you're you're three maps in uh, the mission at this point. I'll come and put a healing circle. It'll allow you to get back up. Okay. Chain reses. I think we are. It's gonna happen. Chain reses. Ah, uh, here we go. Healing circle. Let's go. Awesome. Gorgeous. Awesome. Awesome. Teamwork. That's okay. teamwork. Yeah, right there. <laughs> it was a natty one, but we've made it through. All right. That's it. <laughs> Like the greatest heroes ever killed by spikes entering the dungeon. There you go. Ooh, okay, yeah, hold on. I found a thing. Many. I yeah. found a crystal. Does that yeah, mean that... everybody is the loot kind of shared? So if like one of us kind of like breaks Ooh. off to find stuff like that? Uh, yeah, that's it. Everything you pick up 
is shared. So like the gold, the crystals, uh, it's going to be shared by the whole party. So it's really full on co-op. And for the gear itself, like uh, either weapons or the equipment, um, it's it's instantiated. So what you see, pick it up. It's yours. You're not stealing it from anybody. And it's actually going to be useful to the character you're playing uh, right now. Though, though, though uh, this loot is based on the difficulty you're playing on, um, the type of maps you're playing on, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so cool. now we have our first enemies, um, these are Dwargars. We have uh, over 30 enemies in the game, different family types, different archetypes. Uh, right now we had uh, three Dwargars, I think two of them were the defenders, who like heavily armored. Uh, on the easiest difficulty level, doesn't show as much, you can kind of still plow through them, but as soon as you crank it up a bit, you see that you kind of need to start doing those parries I was talking about, like opening up the armor, that kind of stuff. Bombers that will, uh, when you kill them, be careful, he drops a bomb, just get, oh. get out of there. Oh, you got yeah. it, you're fine. You know what? I'll just drop a heal if I have it. No, you have your potions on the D-pad, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it hurt uh, just a little. Oh, okay. I'll cool. Just wait for some more damage. Cool. So yeah, as we walk around, like we have different objectives. Um, there's combat throughout, but like in this case, we needed to find a way to open the door to access the forge. Uh, that forge actually is uh, Bruner, uh, the dwarf in our party. It's it's his hometown. It, it, after the events of the shard, it got taken over by uh, baddies. And we're actually going to go in there and try to liberate the people from, the, from that location. First step is defeating the chef. So yeah, that's a good example. If you go there, that's an example of uh, an alternate path that you can get, like which is like um, you'll find extra chests, extra. There's some puzzles in there you can try to complete to get the skill points, that kind of stuff. So yeah, feel free. If you feel you see one, you want to explore it, that's cool. Uh, if we get to the end super fast and defeat the boss, um, we can actually, if you guys uh, are interested, we can load it up again and go one step further in difficulty so that you get a sense of how it is when it's a bit more tactical. Okay, so we have a big guy, that's the Verbeegee, uh, throwing traps. That's cool. Uh, by the way, for bigger enemies, if you want, you can use the, the right stick to go into the targeting mode. So you're gonna then, it's gonna focus on one enemy, and then you can use the uh, right stick again to swap in between enemies, and it kind of gives you a good like uh, experience if you want to focus on some guys. Oh, these are the goblins. Again, we have different uh, archetypes. Uh -oh. Oh, are you? I'll just drop a healing circle right here. Uh, and you saw some of those enemies had like a um, skull next to their name. Actually, yeah. you know what? Pause that. I'll do this first because uh, it, it goes back to the question earlier. That's an example of like a short rest uh, mechanic. Um, so it's this is uh, uh, you know it's a core mechanic of the D and D like the pen and paper version, which is like the short rest and long rest where you decide to to, to you know get back your spells that kind of stuff. We wanted to have our own version of it in the game, and the way we went about it is that um, instead of having like an autosave uh, mechanic where the more we progress, it saves automatically, what we've done is critical encounters. There's a certain number of them depending, depending on map size. This one, because it's Act 3, a lot of the focus is on the boss is a bit shorter, so there's probably only three save points. But you decide whether or not you want to save it. It's an option the player takes. It's a risk reward. So if you do take a short rest like we just did, uh, you're going to refill all your potions. Your health is going to come back. Stamina, same thing. Uh, and then it becomes your new save location. So that if we wipe or if you're playing alone and you die, this is where you're going to go back. If we had skipped it, we would go back to the beginning of the map or the last one we would have activated. But if you do decide to skip it, either by pressing the button or keep moving forward, then from that moment on, you get loot rarity bonuses and the loot drop increases. So if you're getting really good at a certain difficulty level and you want to get even better loot, you can start skipping those. So the consequences for failing afterward are greater, but the rewards are way greater as well. So that's kind of like... A I will say, as a avid D&D player, I find that really freaking cool. Thanks. As nerdy yeah, as I am about it. <laughs> Uh, see, like uh, increment, um, increase uh, uh, loot rarity in the short rest. Yeah, that's it. It's 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 you you get it every time you skip it, and if you, and it's uh, cumulative as well. So let's say it's a level you're comfortable uh, at, or you're playing with friends that you know are, are trustworthy, like they're really good. You could say, you know what, 
we're gonna skip all of them and we're gonna try to defeat it in one go and, and you this is the best way to get like well not the best way it's one of the great ways to get the best thing. like increasing difficulty will work as well playing certain maps will really help um, yeah we got we got real lucky yesterday in, in like one of the last sessions i got a legendary drop i was like oh my yeah. god a level <laughs> level one legendary uh boots yeah that's pretty cool Okay, these guys are. When their red outline uh, pops up, it means that it's unblockable, so it's a good, good, good idea to dodge. If uh, that's something I'll mention here, if you see like the, the the meter at the bottom left is your ultimate meter, it'll fill as we do combos. If it fi it's filled up, it's going to be like on fire. I'll uh, I'll just drop a healing circle right here. Um. Yeah, once you once you get that, press both uh, thumbsticks and you'll trigger your ultimate, which is like your superpower. And once it's triggered uh, in the uh, for Drist, it's gonna happen on its own. You're gonna have like the Panther you saw in all its glory. Uh, for Wolfgar, if you trigger your ultimate, then just hold the heavy attack and you'll do like the what I call the spin to win, and you'll see what that means if it happens. That's a uh, that's again, that's a very big like the ones we've had before, but this one is our uh, it's a more unique archetype called the Binger. Uh, he has the really elbow drop he does. Oh, that's cool. That's your uh, that's Bruner's ultimate. It means that whenever we're in this circle, we take less damage, have more armor, and we don't um, expend stamina as we fight. So that's cool. So, so yeah, he actually did the elbow drop on you. Uh, John. I, saw, I saw it. Like, uh, yeah, he's, and, and if you hit him too much, he's going to start puking some acid. So be careful. <laughs> I can actually use my power to hold it in place. I, uh, did I do it like entangle? I think it didn't work. It the air, I did. But that's actually something when we said it's an earlier build. That's, that's an example of something that's not it's not uh, working exactly as it is right now. Is that this optional encounter? That's an example where every map you go through, um, you have optional targets that are named character with specific abilities that you can defeat. They're kind of like mini bosses. These are entirely optional. And when you're playing, you can say, oh, I'll try to find, because you'll see the objective when you start. Oh, there's this guy called the Destroyer or whatever. And then you need to kind of figure out where he is and you uh, you can defeat him to get bonus uh, XP and stuff. We got I think the, uh, oh. the L, uh, press L3 plus R3. Oh, crap. Okay. Bye. Oh, no. It's no. just like the rogue <laughs> to leave all yeah, of you it. guys. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the best, like, ciao. I am living the D&D &D meme right now. Goodbye, yeah. thank <laughs> you for the loot. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> You're like, ah. Thank you for doing all of the hard work. I will see you guys at the pub. <laughs> nice. Now, we're, yeah. Again, should so be. If I, if I press yeah. L, L3 oh. uh, plus yeah. L3. Exactly, and then hold the heavy. That's oh, it. yeah, I'm sorry. And then just aim at the problem to make the problem disappear. I'm a magical now. That's it. Uh, just, yeah, the, the, the enemies you see with the skulls, they're elites. Um, the elite system is. is that's it. It's been so it's not pre preset by level designers. It's like it's gonna depending on the difficulty you're playing, um, and other factors, it will randomly select uh, enemies to be elite. We have different levels, so like, and they're exactly the same level and color scheme as the equipment. So you know they have like regular Ooh. enemies and then uh, uncommon, rare, uh, legendary, that kind of stuff. And basically, as soon as you hit rare and above, so oh, blue and above, cool. yeah, it's the teleporter. You you uh um... so we we came back to the yep. uh, to the Oh okay, cool. I appreciate yeah, so that even just deciding to go off of a path, you don't waste too much time to get back to the main path. Yeah, thank you. That's it's something honestly that it was we really put a lot of thought into that to make sure that if you do explore once you're done, you got your it's reward. It's not a punishment. Just... Yeah. Exactly. You've already spent the time to go there. Oh yeah, that was a good Diablo to... has uh ruined my life with that sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I'll drop here, although I'm fine. And I'll try to entangle these guys just so that they are stuck in place. Caddybree is one of the things. Sometimes I'm too far when I try it. We went through them. 
uh, at, uh, if we have the time to do another one in CR2 challenge ready too, you'll see that uh, those guys are a bit more. This is a mage, like the Booyak, like the Goblin Mage. They have a lot of cool uh, powers. You didn't have time to live long enough so that you see it. But uh, normally, like, he, he can, for instance, you can make one enemy in the in the group that you're fighting completely invincible to kill him. And that's kind of where the, the elite system can really uh, make things interesting. Is As I was saying, like, as soon as you hit, like, rare and above, it's not only that they deal more damage and are a bit more resistant, they start getting unique abilities as well, the elites. So you could be in a situation where you know this map, you've played before, and you know, okay, Verbeek is tough, usually the, the, the Booyag is going to actually shield the Verbeek, but the Booyag is kind of weak, so I'll drop him first. But then you play on a higher difficulty, system does its thing, and boom, suddenly, that, that uh, Booyah gets picked up as an elite and he has like false life which gives him like kind of a shield and extra health and it gives him I don't know like he has absolutely no hit reacts as an, as a, as an ability so now it changes the fight completely because you're gonna have to handle that verbi for way longer and it changes your strategy that's something that was important for us as well I think we're approaching other half uh, I see it, you, man. We're trying to save these people, but you guys really went for everything of value and destroyed it. I love it. <laughs> there's two <laughs> types of D&D &D groups, okay? There's yeah. the people that are trying to become the heroes, and then there's the people that just want to get paid. That's it. I kind of have a feeling of what kind of group we're, we're playing as <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's so the hard. people that want to get paid by heroes. That's it. There you go. <laughs> This is our... Yeah, this is the button that would normally bring back the elevator if we, it was already up. Oh, I see. And if we, yeah, if we go up on it, we're gonna see other oh, graph. the forge into like a makeshift uh, kitchen where he cooks a specialty of the ruby which is uh, easy. Yep. Which is the soup. Classic. You, you are what you eat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. All right, so this is just making me just want to play this like all the time. This is <laughs> legit really cool. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so that guy is uh, he's never big like we saw, but he's a bit more of a custom version. So he's totally immune to fire. Um, he has a spinning attack and this the sound that he just did can be brutal. Ah, oh, good call with the handle. I'll try to hold him in this. I can do it if you have your ultimate. It's a good spot to do it. Uh, and he has the spin that he does sometimes. If he does that, try to dodge out and get away from the fire. But uh, yeah, he's a pretty uh, boss. On he, he will make it. I have fairly simply, I think. Like, as soon as you crank it up. Ooh, good call. Ultimate corner. Do my uh oh. It's the VFX party. Healing circle, just Ooh. in case. Yeah. Oh, and he is gone. The cutscenes are a very, very cool touch. Ooh, stepping on a Lego, man. Hate that. <laughs> Worst Monday ever. Yeah, he's having a bad time. <laughs> that is one way to die yeah that's it um so yeah that's that's that was the chef um so whenever you finish a, a big boss and in act three uh you're gonna get like we saw like a tally screen saying okay you've defeated this guy in the base camp i don't know if it's implemented the version we're playing right now but you have your trophies as well like kind of a statue of every boss you defeated and when you look at them it gives you detail on the level of difficulty that kind of stuff um and you have your classic tally screen. You can see who performed the best where. And um, 
like I said, all the loot we picked up, now we can finally go back to the base camp and see exactly. Uh, you'll get to actually see it and equip it, and I'll talk a bit more about it at that point. I saw a thing called executions. Yes. Uh, executions are like, that's it, I think it's the, that, that light attack I was talking about, like uh, in the back with drists, uh, or when you finish this this enemy with a specific attack, it is gotcha. trigger execution. Yeah. Is that the thing where I see like a Y and a B, like, Press that uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That, I that was trying to activate the... that earlier, but it wouldn't yeah. proc. You know what? It's my bad. We were, we were, we were having fun. I was stuck. Yeah, you guys like, were effort. slapping them hard. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the hands-on experience for Dark Alliance. JFC did a great, great job of kind of explaining tons of the game to me and uh, and and John as well. I had to cut down a lot of the video uh, and even extra content. We actually went back into the uh, the same mission and did it on a much harder. We did it on one step difficulty, higher difficulty. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments. I'll end up posting that. I I've been noticing I've been having some little audio issues while editing in this, but I hope it's not too terrible. But I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Let me know what your guys' true thoughts are down in the uh, in the comments there. I'm very very excited for this game. It's it's something I've been like, I can't talk about until today for, for posting it today. So I've been really, really excited and cringing and just wanted to talk to you guys about it and play it. So I want to know what you guys are thinking about it. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this on the channel. Because when it comes out, man, I, I think I'm just going to be playing a bunch of it. Anyway, I love you guys' faces. Thank you guys so much for joining. And I will see you guys all next time. See you guys then.